Hey second graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. Last week we started talking about energy and we were focused on light energy. Today we're going to be talking about another type of energy called sound energy. So your target says I can investigate the effects on objects by increasing or decreasing amounts of sound energy. So hopefully you remember from last week that energy is the ability to cause change or do work. And in second grade, we're going to be talking about three forms of energy. Today we're talking about sound energy. Last week we talked about light energy. And next week we'll, talk, we'll be talking about thermal energy, which is another word for heat. So sound energy is a form of energy that is produced by vibrations. And a vibration is when something moves back and forth quickly. So put your hand on your throat and go, ah, or talk, say some words. Hopefully you feel something moving. That's a vibration. So inside of our throats are something called vocal cords. And when we talk or sing or hum, they vibrate. They move back and forth very quickly and that pushes the air out of our mouths and creates a sound wave. Sound travels in waves. And then the sound wave goes into people's ears and hits their eardrum and causes their eardrum to vibrate. And that's how we're able to hear sounds. All sounds are caused by a vibration or something moving back and forth quickly. So when we're talking about sound energy, vibration is a very, very, very important word since all sounds are created by vibrations. Another important word when we're talking about sound energy is this word pitch. Maybe you've heard this word in music class before. Pitch is how high or how low a sound is. It doesn't mean how loud or quiet. That's another sound word called volume, but pitch is high or low. And I'll show you an example of high and low sounds in just a minute. And the interesting thing is that pitch is determined by the speed of the vibration. Faster vibrations cause higher pitched sounds. Slower vibrations cause lower pitched sounds. So I'm gonna show you an example or give you an example to listen to of low pitch and high pitch. So these are something called a tuning fork. They're not like the forks we eat with. <laughs> these are used by singers or musicians or people who play instruments to help them tune to the correct pitch because each of these makes a different pitched sound. The bigger the tuning fork, the slower it's going to vibrate and the lower the pitch it's going to make. The smaller the tuning fork, the faster it's going to vibrate and the higher the pitch it's going to make. So let me show you an example. Here is a low pitch. And then here is a high pitch. Are you ready? Do you hear the difference? One is lower, one is higher. It doesn't have to do with loud and quiet. All right, so how is sound used in our everyday lives? I would like for you to pause the video, talk to mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whatever grown up you are with, and see if you can brainstorm or think of some different ways that we use sound in our everyday lives and why it is important to, to us. And then when you're ready, come back and I'll show you the ones I came up with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the, these are just some of the ways we use sound. There are many, many more. So you may have thought of some ones that I didn't. These are just some common ones. We listen to music. We hear our teacher talk. Birds, we can hear birds singing. We can hear a, a car beeping its horn. We can listen to the TV as we watch it. And we can talk and communicate with our friends. So today we're going to do a little investigation. And I'm going to show you, I have right here, five jars of water. And these are different colors simply because I've added food coloring to them. The food coloring is there just to make it easier for you to be able to see the water. Otherwise, it would kind of blend in with the jar and it might be difficult for you to see. Okay, so each of these jars has a different amount of water in it. So the question is, 
do you, when I tap these jars of water with my plastic knife, do you think they're all going to make the same sound? Why or why not? So you can make a hypothesis, share with a grown up. You could say, yes. I think all of these jars, uh, these jars of water will make the same sound because, or you could say, no, I don't think these jars of water will all make the same sound because, all right? Make your hypothesis and then come back and we'll do the investigation. All right, hopefully you've had time to make your hypothesis. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knife and tap each jar so we can hear if they're all making the same sound. Are you ready? <gasps> what did you notice? I noticed when I tap the jars that they do not all have the same sound. Did you notice that it kind of like, kind of sounded like I was playing a song? Maybe I could play like Mary Had a Little Lamb or something. Did you notice that? They all make a different sound. They make a different pitch. I noticed that this one, the blue one, that only has a little bit of water in it, makes a much higher pitch sound than the one that has a lot of water in it. Do you hear the difference? They're different pitches. The one with the most water has the lowest pitch. The one with the least water makes the highest pitch. So I could say that the more water that is in a jar, the lower the pitch it makes or the less water that's in a jar, the higher the pitch it makes. Let me tap them one more time so you can notice because I really want you to notice. Can you hear that? Sounds like I'm playing an instrument, doesn't it? Now let me explain to you what is going on. The reason that the glass with the most water has the lowest pitch is because, do you remember how I told you that slower vibrations make lower pitches? Well, guess what? When I tap this jar with all the water in it, the water slows down the vibrations because sound waves do not travel through liquid as fast as they travel through gases. So in this jar that's almost all the way full of liquid, the vibrations are slowed down and that's what creates a lower pitch. In this jar that only has a little bit of liquid and mostly gas, the vibrations are able to travel much faster because sound waves travel much faster through gases. So that's why the fast vibrations are creating a higher pitch. So to answer our question from the beginning, yes, all of these um, jars have a different sound. And the reason is because the amount of water in it affects the speed of the vibrations and the speed of the vibrations affects the pitch. I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun. This is an activity that you could do at home with a parent's permission. Even though none of this is dangerous, please make sure you're asking permission to use their glasses or their food coloring or their, you know, whatever you're going to tap the jars with. Um, in fact, you don't, you don't really even have to have food coloring. I just did that so you could see it easier. Um, you just need different jars, fill them with different amounts of water. If you could, if you would like to even record a song or something and send it to me, I would love to see it. I hope that you had fun and I will text, talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.